Let's talk about designing five-star Airbnbs and what you need to know to get started doing your own. Designs are super important when it comes to Airbnb. These designs allow you to set your property aside from the competition, allow you to charge more for your average daily rates, and allow you to be found by more guests, depending on the categories you get in and such. Designs allow your property to not just look like the average house or single family home, but be geared specifically towards your clientele in your area. This is super important when you're trying to attract a certain customer client base for your rentals. On top of this, it allows your property to stand out in photos. This is extremely important when you're listing on OTAs like Airbnb because guests are bombarded by a ton of great photos across a lot of different Airbnbs and having yours have its own personality and stand out from the rest is what attracts guests to originally click on your listing. Airbnbs are geared towards unique stays. They are not supposed to look like your average single family house. In today's video, we are going to talk through all the components that can make your Airbnb a unique stay. The first thing we're going to cover today is understanding your guest persona. This is crucially important when you're originally going to buy your property and starting to think through your interior design. Who are your renters going to be? Are they going to be single people? Are they going to be couples? Are they going to be a family of four with kids? Are they going to be a family of four with pets? Are they going to be extended family with grandparents or grandchildren? Along with understanding who your guests are, understanding where they're coming from. Are they traveling from out of town by airplane? Are they traveling by car? Are they somewhat local? Is it a weekend stay or is it really a one week, two week vacation? By understanding all this, you can really start to think about what your guests need in that experience, what amenities they need, what designs really can tailor to that experience and really allow your guests to enjoy themselves further. For example, our midterm rental in the Northwest, we knew our guest persona were couples who work remote, who want extended stay in that area, who are outdoorsy, like to climb, bike rides, ski, things like that, and have dogs. The other persona we had were families, usually groups of four, who also have dogs who are also outdoorsy, want that extended stay. We set up our property specifically to these audiences, and therefore all the guests that have stayed have really loved the property and have tried to stay longer than their original reservation because they feel so immersed in the vibe that we created for them that they love. Our property in the Southwest is a short-term rental and we did the same thing. The difference is we created a property geared towards a guest persona that were vacationers, families with children, extended families with children. They could have pets, but most don't. But again, it's more family oriented. It's less of a working remote location. They're not really digital nomads. They're people going there for a weekend getaway or maybe a week long vacation with their family. So a different clientele, different guest persona, but we, uh, we created a rental that fit those needs for those guests and created that great experience for them. Today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Bookly. Bookly is the first single URL platform out there built for hosts of Airbnb and VRBO. Bookly maximizes your social media channels by turning them into bookings. Use the code RENTLIVPLAY to get 15% off your subscription to Bookly or click the link in our description below. The next thing we are talking about is incorporating location and climate into your design elements. This is really important because based on where your property is located, you're going to have different characteristics that you're going to want to bring inside into your rental or even outside in the outdoor space. A great example of this is our property in Northwest. We want to focus on bringing in those design elements that have to do with like pine forests, mountains, that kind of feel. It also is in snow half the year. We wanted to have that cozy, warm, design elements that you know it makes you when you come inside you're like wow i'm ready to grab a book sit by the fireplace be cozy and warm in some blankets or you want to go out and play in nature and come back and relax watching a movie and feel like you're immersed in that space and by adding you know cozy bigger furniture things that are a little heavier with the space but allow a more kind of cozy environment that works really well for that kind of Northwest atmosphere that you do spend a chunk of the year kind of inside in that space. However, in contrast, in the Southwest, we want something that was more minimalist, airy design 
something that was a lighter feel, but also brought in some of that desert climate and desert environment. So having things that kind of draw that in really help enhance that space. Great example are the cabinets down in that Southwest, bring in some of the cactus components into the cabinets. These are things that when you're thinking about design, you really want to understand how you want to bring in and work with the natural area around you. Color choices are really important. Northwest, we focused on greens and blues. These are cold colors, but these are colors you would find around the property, right? You'd find your greens from your pine trees. You'd find your blues from your lakes and rivers up in the mountains. We use these colors because they're in the local region and we tie them into the house. In the Southwest, we did the same thing. We took colors that were warm, very Southwestern desert atmosphere, things like oranges, kind of like rusty reds and some kind of like pinkish, which you'd find in like cactus flowers and brought them into the space to create that warm vibe that the Southwest really is known for. We've seen people down in the Southwest bringing cold colors and really kind of accentuate their space with those feels, but that's not something you would expect. If I were traveling down to the Southwest desert, for example, and I go into a house that was very, a lot of blues or greens and cold colors, that would kind of surprise me. That wouldn't really give me that relaxing Southwest vibe I would be envisioning when I went, went to book the trip. That's something super important to think about when you're creating your design elements. Designing different spaces brings in a lot of things to think about. It depends on the space and again, knowing your guests and your guest persona on what you want to do with that space. A great example is in the Southwest, we took a closet, knocked it out and turned it into an office, but it's not a full blown office. It's a little nook that people can use if they have to take a meeting, but they're probably not going to spend a ton of time working there during their vacation. However, in the Northwest, we took entire bedroom space and turned it into a full-blown office creative space studio because we knew our guest persona that those guests are going to spend a lot of their time at that property working or creating content. And we want to make sure that we had a space that completely can isolate from the rest of the house and also accommodate that long period of working while they're on their trip. Doing that, you know, obviously could be a gamble because if you take a four bedroom like we did and make it a three bedroom and then create an office, you're obviously reducing your your nightly rate potentially if you're comparing against four bedrooms. However, when you offer that very special and specific amenity that sets your property aside like what we did, it really changes the guests that you get. By doing that, we ex are getting the exact guests that want to book that property that we built that off the persona for. We know that our guests will want to stay, be super happy, and all of our guests want to stay much longer. Great examples, we had a guest that stayed for a month and they extended it a second month because they felt the space was so great for their needs. Using these things to really help your design and help the way you structure your listing is super important. Accent walls are super important when it comes to the design of your space. These walls create a focal point for your room and, and really give that room a specific feel. A great example is in our Northwest place, we used accent walls in our movie theater where we built a mountain landscape 3D out of a combo of MDF materials and then painted it so it ties in the outside environment with the same theme, but also gives that accent walls really draws your focus to that space. In that property, the master bedroom has an accent wall as well, and it's a mix between three-dimensional and solid color. In the Southwest, we did accent walls with paint we tied in specific colors we want to do and designs to create that space and make it really inviting. So a few important things to keep in mind that there are a variety of accent walls. You could do accent walls out of wallpaper. You could do them out of paint. You could do them out of custom 3D materials such as MDF and wood. You could also bring in a muralist and have a muralist paint an accent wall for you. In our properties, we thought a lot about the lighting. Lighting design is an important part when you think about the space and the feel you're trying to get from it. Example is in our Northwest house, we did wall mounted pendants with a warm LED bulb that gave a yellow glow to it. And these pendants are part of the design on the wall. And then by having that yellow warm feel, it contrasts the dark blue wall behind it and really gives it this nice pop that we were going for. And then that warm feel also carries into the blankets and throws that we have on the bed. The second component is when we decide to look at chandeliers for the dining room table, we went with a long or rectangular chandelier instead of doing something that 
is round. And the reason for that are a couple components. I'm tall, I'm 6'5", and I've always hit my head on round chandeliers that are over rectangular tables and drives me crazy. For me, that was a big component, but also by having a rectangular chandelier over a rectangular table, it gives a lot more streamlined and clean look than doing the round chandelier over a rectangular table in that kind of space. Now let's talk about furniture. Furniture is a key point of the design and arguably probably one of the hardest things to nail right. Furniture has a lot of different things that you have to think about when you're choosing it. The biggest thing is you don't wanna to go to Ikea and just buy everything from the wall or from the room, even though it's super tempting and easy because it's all there and set up. Ikea furniture has a very specific look. Everyone knows it's Ikea. On top of that, it'll drive you crazy trying to assemble all the different components from Ikea in your house. That's one big thing to keep in mind. Ikea furniture, although is great, great for dorm rooms, has a tendency to break when you use it in high use spaces like a short term rental. What you really want to do is you want to make sure that your key components like your beds, your couches, your tables, your chairs, all are nice high end furniture that has enough quality to withstand a high amount of use from these rentals. You're going to have to replace your furniture periodically every few years. It's just part of this, but you don't want to cheap out on that furniture. One great tip I can give you is if you haven't heard of them, go check out Minoan. Minoan offers discounts on great places like Harry Bar and West Elm, things like that, and really allows you as a rental host to create your entire shopping list for your property and get what you need and not have to pay full retail prices. So shout out to them. We've worked with them. We've saved thousands of dollars on the furniture we bought and really love the experience. That's really important thing when you go through your rental process is making sure your key piece of furniture are the high-end pieces that you need to withstand the rental abuse. However, that being said, there's a lot of different accents or things like that, like fake plants or art or little things that you can do, you could get from Target or other stores that if they do break, which probably won't happen very likely or often, aren't a big deal to replace. And they're not gonna get the wear and tear that the art piece of furniture are gonna get. Your outdoor areas are equally as important as the indoor areas. Almost all guests love to spend time outside as long as it's set up right and like your inside is. Especially properties that are located in warmer climates where you could spend a chunk of the day or evening outside. When you're thinking about your outdoor areas, you wanna make sure that you create an outdoor dining area. This is where guests can go outside and eat, maybe even cook if you set up an outdoor kitchen. And then you also wanna create outdoor lounging areas. This is really important if you have a pool, hot tub or other body of water that guests might want to lay in the sun after taking a dip. Along with this, you wanna think about what your lighting is for your outdoor areas. In our Southwest property, we have a pool slash hot tub. We have outdoor dining area, barbecue, things like that, outdoor lounge, but we wanna extend the use of the space into the evening because part of it is the views and we sit up above the skyline. We want people to enjoy that. What we did is we set up a automated, so light sensitive timer system that runs all of our outdoor lighting on our properties. We have landscape lights, we have lights up in the trellises, and when night comes, the property just jumps to life and you can be outside really late and really enjoying having a great experience because it's well lit and it's relaxing. This really extends the outdoor use of the property to all hours, which is really great and unique for that area. What we try to do is we try to always take our guest feedback to improve our properties. We're always asking questions, trying to get more information from our guests, get more details. As we get that feedback, we can continually enhance, improve the property. We also try to make sure we get feedback based on what our cleaners are seeing. We have a midterm rental that some guests brought their own hampers in. And this was really interesting because the laundry room's upstairs, some bedrooms are down, some are up. This was a great indication that this property needs a few extra things to really bump up what we're offering our guests, including these things in by taking guest feedback and really raising the quality of the listings is super important. Please take a moment and support our channel. We want to keep creating videos to help you grow as rental hosts and drop a comment below. Make sure you like this video and help join us on our journey. And we hope to see you on your journey as well.